Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we are going to try out one of the new epics today. Um, probably one of the ones I was most excited about. This guy and Thacker in the Fats, the Barbarian, are probably the two epics that I really like the look of. Um, Duck the Pierced is the one we're going to be trying today. Um, again, just like, <laughs> what a sweet job they do of some of the aesthetics here. Like, the skeleton on the shield, pretty cool. All of the kind of body piercings and stuff, absolutely sweet. The rusty old kind of weapon, really good job. Really good job. He competes with uh, Grinner for a best smile of the year, I'd say. But yeah, Duck the Pierced is going to be this video's uh, spotlight. Now, why was I so excited about this guy? Firstly, he's defense based. Defense based champions are a lot easier to keep alive. Um, secondly, He's kind of basically got a Stagnite style A2, decrease attack and defense. Stagnite's known for being one of the best epics in the game, up there top five, I'd say. He's going to be in the same sort of camp if his um, kit is working to the same sort of quality of AI. So he's got a decrease attack and defense. You do really need to book him out. If you're booking him out, you're going to get your 100% chance to land these two skills. And um, you see here as well, 75% chance of landing it, 100 if booked, on each critical hit. Really important. You need to get his crit rate up to 100 to get this to work. And decreased defense parts essential in, in this kind of kit. But free turn cooldown on this type of ability is brilliant. Um, defense based as well. So he's going to get the damage in with his kind of tanky nature. He's got an A1 which has got, if booked, a 40% chance. It's a double hitter. Each hit has got a 40% chance to drop accuracy. Now, if you're dropping accuracy on people like Dragon, Ice Golem, Finite, it means you're going to take a lot less debuffs yourself, even Spider, actually, which, uh, sorry, no, you're not going to be attacking the Spiderlings, so Spider won't count. But dropping the accuracy on people like the Finite, um, the Ice Golem especially, and the Dragon, just means that you're going to take a lot less of those nasty debuffs and you're going to stay in the game for a lot longer. This guy, for me, if his kit works well, is actually a Ice Golem God. Decrease accuracy, you're not going to get frozen. Decrease attack, you're not going to take those big old slams. Decrease defense, you're going to hit a lot harder. All of that kit is Ice Golem for me. Um, he's got this A3. Now, this A3 is what I'm a bit worried about. So it's on a four-turn cooldown if you book it. It may be, after watching this video, you decide if you can get away with it to not book this. But, obviously that's out of your control, but if somehow your books go just here, if your books just go into the A2 first and you get this one cooldown, I would stop placing any more books. I'm not that fussed about more books here, and I don't think you want to book this, unless you're doing like a, some sort of cheese clan boss thing with him. Um, because you get a provoke out, okay, that's not bad. Provoke places a provoke on one enemy. So places means that he doesn't need accuracy, uh, he doesn't need, to worry about affinity for that to land. Also, he's got a 75% chance of placing a provoke for um, for one turn on two random enemies. So it's going to do it on one. Can happen on two. And it places reflect damage on himself and an unkillable buff on himself. So the idea here is he's provoking one or ideally two enemies. He can't die. And when he's getting hit, he's reflecting 30% of the damage that he gets hit for. All of that's okay. But... If he's prioritizing this ability over this, then that's not okay. This ability is way stronger for almost all content that you do. So we'll see that when we do the runs. Um, as I said, he's defense based. He's got a faction crip aura as well, which for orcs is kind of nice. Uh, and if we just consider orcs as a faction, you know, in terms of decreased defense champions and decreased attack champions, you've got Zargala, who's really strong, in fairness. You've got Robar as a legendary who's strong. No one else here, though. Uh, I don't think we've got any other epics to do it. No. And we're short on rares that are any good at it as well. Gaelic's kind of your best, next best. So if you're pulling him, he's probably going to be in like 99% of people's faction war teams if you've got him, I would say. If you've got him and leveled him, you know, Zard the thing with Zardala is she's great but she's attack based, she's quite squishy and she's quite easy to kill. Whereas he's gonna come in as a tank, hard to kill 
and he's going to be doing more utility than what Zardiala does. So I think he's top draw. Top draw for Faction Wars, top draw for Ice Golem for sure. Let's build him out and let's get taken for a run. Right then, let me show you what I've done. So I decided to build him in stalwart gear, not for any other reason than I had stalwart gear lying around and stalwart gear makes you take less damage from AoE hits. So anyone who is going to be absorbing damage, stalwart's a nice set to have, but you can literally put him in any set you want. If you're going to be running him in something like clan boss, I would say life steals a way to go. Um, unless you've got another way to stay alive. But I've basically gone for a defense ring, crit damage on my amulet because I'm going to be going 100% crit rate because he needs 100% crit rate to land his decreased defense. So it's always nice to throw crit damage on an amulet if you're going to be at 100% crit rate anyway. Albeit, if you're struggling to stay alive, defense is another good option here. Try and get some accuracy on the amulet as well. I've got an accuracy banner with a bit of speed and defense on it. And then I was just looking for um, pieces that were quite fast. He needs to be ideally going first in your team to drop that decreased defense. Um, and you want things like defense percentage on his chest, crit rate on his gloves, unless you can get his crit rate up through the rest of your gear, in which case you might go crit damage on his gloves or defense percentage on his gloves. Uh, and then I've just kind of finished the build off with bits of speed and crit damage, really. So nothing too crazy in his gear. 202 speed, 4.1k defense, 100% crit rate. 162 crit damage and enough accuracy to land his debuffs. Um, and then in terms of masteries, I've gone for a kind of war master build and a support tree. I feel like this is probably what like 90% of people are going to use on a champion like this, um, similar to what you would with Stagnite. If he hits hard, then you might decide to not run him in somewhere like Clan Boss and actually take Helm Smasher. And Helm Smasher will do bigger hits. So AoE hits on the A2 will put, pull out some damage. And you might decide to go Helm Smasher. And in which case you probably would take a defensive tree. So there's always more than one option you can do with Masteries. But this is how I've set him up. Um, the reason why I've taken this side of the tree. A bit more accuracy here. Um, it's really nice if you've got somebody who's going to be running dungeon content to have Evil Eye. Really useful. Uh, Sniper just to get the chance of his A1 and A3 up. Uh, sorry, his A3 won't increase, just his A1. Um, but I did want Master Hexer to try and improve the amount of turns that we get decreased attack and defense on for. So, um, as I say, maybe the support tree is not the best secondary, but I really did want this evil eye. Um, but you might decide to go defensive tree and get some good results from that as well. So, we're going to take him for a run. Um, as I say, the place where I feel like he's best suited in the game to really help you uh, develop what you're doing. And it's kind of what Stagnite does for most people at the moment, if they've got him. It's Ice Golem. He's actually the positive affinity for Ice Golem 20. So if you were just running him Ice Golem 20, you could actually run him at 85% crit rate and get the additional 15% chance to land your crit, uh, your crit hits and therefore still place your, your kind of big abilities. So we're going to rush for some healing. I've got a block revive champion here. I've got some speed here. Uh, we've got the new fella coming in here. And then I guess I just roll in with someone else. Maybe throw an aura in there for fun. Um, for a bit of damage. So the thing that I'm most worried about is what they've decided to do with his AI. Does he decide to do his decreased defense first? Or does he decide to do his... Oh, so he's done decreased defense. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, so we've got the, the main ability we want to do going first. So I think we're going to try a pretty funky team. We've got Norog in there to absorb some damage. We've got Duke in there to drop our defense to allow the rest of the team to do some damage. Healer with our Grush. Luria's got a block revive, so she can come in and do a bit of work here. And then you've got your speed in uh, High Cartoon. So the main thing I want to check here is... Does he do his drop defense first or is he going to provoke first? Um, let's just sew it down. So you want him to be your fastest champion other than perhaps your speed champion. He has done drop defense first, so that's awesome. That's exactly what we want him to be doing. And then we've got the rest of the team in there doing damage. So after he does his drop defense, he gets a couple of provokes out. And I mean, luckily we've got Luria freezing anyway, so we didn't have to worry about that for this run. But this, this wave here can be a problem for a lot of people. So block buffs out from Norog, absolute beast. You see how quickly he cycles back to that drop defense move. Awesome. If he does the same drop defense and attack move first on clan boss, 
this guy could be awesome kind of anywhere. Um, in fact, for me, already, I'm looking at him thinking he's possibly the best new champion. Provoke's gone out on three champs, three enemies. Um, so that was a 75% chance for that to land. Plus, he gets to reflect damage. Um, so far, so good, really. And he hits for decent numbers, like 27, 30k on an AoE. Um, we'll take that for a defensive champion with all of this utility. So, so what he does here, he's just got his A1. See that drop turn meter from his Evil Eye Mastery. Nor throws out the lock. Double hit again, 20 odd K. I'm just going to pause it before we get into his next ability. I want to see what's available here. So everything's available. Let's see what he does. He's provoked. Hmm. So on the boss, he decides to provoke and make himself unkillable not do decreased defense and attack. I wonder why they would make his AI do something different. Anyway, the decreased attack goes on, um, which is the best move against Ice Golem. Like, to drop his attack is a huge ability to do. We get the decreased accuracy on as well. So now what we've got here is the chance for you to be frozen dramatically decreases. 50% less chance for him to do that. I love this kit. I think this kit is actually brilliant. So see that, no freezes at all. And fairly weak damage because we had the adds dead and we had the um, decrease attack on. Provoke goes on the two adds. I don't think that really does anything for this. Let me, let's check when they get their turn, if they get a turn. I think on Ice Golem, the Provoke actually doesn't do anything. Let's just take control a second. I'm going to try and let them have a turn. So he's about to get his turn. When they're provoked, does it do anything at all? Still, it's still not happening. Uh, we can actually do this move though. Got buffs. No, so provoke does nothing in this situation. Uh, I didn't think it did. But still, decrease defense and attack. Um, and decrease accuracy on the main boss. All really solid, like godlike skills for Ice Golem. So that's actually top draw. Top draw. We'll let this uh, kill out the boss and then we're going to try him somewhere else. So we've cruised through. He's actually done the same damage as a Norog. A Norog hits. So I'm pretty pleased with that. 1.5 mil, 1.6 mil. Considering the amount of utility he's bringing to the table a bit like grush actually grush brings a load of utility and he can hit ducks in the same type of camp um, and i'm also i don't have him built for damage i have him built for utility so really pleased with that um if you take him somewhere like dragon again he's the neutral affinity here so he can definitely come into a team can definitely do some work for you in a team like this um i was actually running purgator here showing him off the, uh, yesterday but you could run him in a team like this. Maybe the same sort of team even. Um, 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 um. Let me do this. Yeah, so you can run him in the same sort of team as long as he does. Let's just see what he does on auto. Again, decreased defense first. Good. So he's putting out his decreased defense. Enables your damage dealers to come in and do their work. Um, and because he's on a three turn cooldown, you just get it back so fast. Like he's got his provokes out there again. Seems to consistently be landing those provokes, which is nice. And again, just solid, solid um, abilities. He's going to come straight in here. He should have his, his decreased defense down again. So fast. It's actually um, him and Stagnite have got some of the best cooldowns for that ability in the game that's why he's so strong that's why he's only in so many teams he's probably going to be the best epic they've released this this time around and i've actually released like quality epics real quality epics um but you can see here he's provoking people that you just don't want your damage dealers to have to deal with comes in slams the wave again and we're through to the dragon for the dragon kind of what's he got really Decreased accuracy is going to help for the Scorch ability and that type of thing. Um, 
decreased defense and attack is going to help as well. So actually for Dragon, he's got a lot. The Provoke and the um, Reflect Damage and that type of stuff, really, there's not that much use of it in his kit other than in the arena. And I don't know that you'd really play him that much in the arena. He's not bad in the arena for the decreased defense, but the chance of you getting your two abilities out um, is probably pretty slim. So we'll see them finish the job here. Get the decreased attack and defense out. We didn't have the decreased accuracy on at the time, so we still got we still took all of the debuffs. But again, quality, I'd say. Quality um, job resisted all the way across. See that? All resists because decreased accuracy was on. So we didn't pick up any more debuffs. Um, and again, we'll let this play through and then we'll try them somewhere else. So there we go, another kill, um, three minute odd team. What's he done here? 930k versus Purgator, uh, 1.4 million. He's built for damage and 1.2 million Silver the Drake. So again, pretty good damage numbers for someone that's not really in there built to do damage. Um, if we were to look at Spider, now Spider, uh, this is my normal team. Let's take those out. Um, Spider. Obviously, he's bringing decreased defense and attack. Same as what you would get from a Stagnite. Okay, so that is always going to be useful. So I like the idea of this and this. We probably would need somebody to do a... Maybe we do something like this. Freeze in. Silar for more turn meter control. And then somebody who's going to come in for damage. Probably would be a cold heart. Or you could use Armager, or you could use like an um, Ultimate Gaelic for HP burn. Like there's there's a bunch of options you can do um, with a, a Cold Heart in. So the idea here, he's going to be, again, your decrease attack and defense champion. Uh, do I have in speed tune right? Okay, a bunch of my champs are going to go before him, but that's fine. So he still does decrease defense and attack first. It's really important to test these things. With comes on, sometimes they throw the AIs all over the place. Um, there goes our freeze. And then basically all we're doing here is we're waiting to cycle round to Heartseekers all the time. So, you know, just, just basically trying to drop the turn meter and the speed of the spider all the time. We've got Anak here, do just insane keeping these spiderlings frozen by the way uh, if you haven't seen my video on him you should check that out as well because he's kind of busted um busted good and he's also bringing strength and block debuffs for this for the team but you can see we're just cycling back around now he's the positive affinity to spider which isn't necessarily the best thing for a tank you almost want for spiderlings to go after your tanks but uh, you know, because we don't want him to go after our cold heart, for example. But, um, you know, for Spider-19, he would be the negative affinity. And he can come in there and be your tank, which is actually one of the places where most people, like, struggle and fail. But you can see here, we're kind of just cycling around. And um, he's doing a great job. So he's actually tanking up a bit. But, again, we can let this play through. Um, he's He's quality here. You know, he's he's as good as as kind of like a stag would be, and a stag is great here. He's as good as a Tyrell would be, I would say. Perhaps he doesn't bring quite as much utility as Stag and Tyrell in this fight because Tyrell does have a turn meter decrease. Um Stag Knight does have a decreased speed ability. So perhaps he doesn't bring quite as much to this fight. But still, if you're gonna build him out, he's gonna be viable here. Um he does also have this kind of self-unkillable buff, which it's, it's not Paragon-esque. Paragon can keep it up for the whole time and draw the damage into him. He doesn't have the ability to do that. He's not, he's not in the same type of league, but um, you know, still really solid, really solid. And you can see this team here, which I haven't like pulled this team together for any particular reason other than I was looking for champions thinking, yeah, these might work. So don't feel like this is all like premeditated as a team that needs to do this. Literally just pulled five champions that I've got geared out of the account. Um, you can see actually Anak does a great job as well as the tank, by the way. 
But we should be fine as, as long as we get that next heart seat out, it should be over. And then we'll uh, we'll run him somewhere else as well. I think Heartseeker should be next. There it is. Nearly job done. Just needs a uh, one hit of Warmaster. Someone do it. Do it. There we go. Nice. Three minute run. He's done 3.4 million of the damage. 2.4 from Anak. This is like, this is a team. This is a team event. Spider 20 is about building the right team to do the job. Turn me to control. Turn me to control. Turn me to control, both for you and for them. Um, complete lockout of the enemy. Decrease defense and attack. So that if we do start taking hits, we're not taking too many. Really about building the right team for this. So there we go. Um, now for Fire Knights, he is the wrong affinity for Fire Knight 20. Sometimes the wrong affinity is actually a blessing. Sometimes if you want to stop Spiderlings coming after your damage, the wrong affinity can really help you. So it doesn't mean he can't come here. And because his ability for decreased defense is a chance of placing decreased defense if you hit for a crit. Um, basically, what that means is if you get a weak hit, you won't place decreased defense. Yeah? So 75% chance of placing decreased attack. If you get a weak hit, you won't place that. Um, you won't land that. Normally, when you see the word placing decreased defense, you think to yourself, ah, great. I don't need to strike the enemy to do it. In this case, though, it's based on a critical hit. So the, the wording is actually almost irrelevant. The wording is almost irrelevant. Normally, when you see placing, you can place it on an um, opposite affinity and it does a good job, but not in this case. So we do need to bring in... So he's, he's going to be our decreased defense champion, but we can't have it as a reliable decreased defense here. Doesn't mean he won't be good, though. Uh, so Grush can come in again. Uh, we just need another multi-hitter. To get through that shield he does have a, a reflect here but it's not strong enough um it doesn't go across your whole team and yeah it won't kind of stop you from from taking all of that damage where shall i run let's try this So you see that we've got, what, one, two, three decreased defenses out, not five. And that's a big difference. Like, that can be the difference between you securing a run and not. Obviously, I'm bringing in a big gun here um, just to mix it up a bit. But, you know, the ability to place provokes and stuff like that is still going to help you. So if you've got this guy built out and don't have another decreased defense built out yet, he's still better than not bringing a decreased defense champion in at all. Like, by a mile. By an absolute mile. You want decreased defense AoE for any of these high level stages. So you see we've thrown out a couple of provokes on the big boys. The provokes do land because that is a place rather than a, a hit. So you don't need to worry about whether a provoke is going to go on or not. I think we should have the decreased defense available now. Although he's just taking a load of turn meter control. He is though tanking for us in this instance. So he's not just doing one job here. He's doing multiple jobs now. He's tanking the damage. Um, and allowing our damage dealers a bit of freedom to do what they need to do, which is super important if you're struggling to get through content. You know, just having a tank in there that can take hits massively helps you do the job. So we get onto the boss. I'm not sure if I bought enough multi hitters here, if I'm honest. I think we've only got Coldheart as someone who hits. I don't know if he hits twice on his A1. No, he does hit twice on his A1. So he will get some multi hits off for us, which is nice. Decreased accuracy has gone on. You see now we get resistance on three people for that potential uh, decreased speed debuff. Huge. Three people got away with it. We still are probably in trouble though. So in this instance we lose. Uh, I didn't bring enough protection for my team. I should have brought Septimus out um, and brought in someone that was more about protection like a seal of the drakes or someone but there you go but you can see what he's doing for us um double hitters on the a1 he does get the drop defense out when we need it um but he will place weak hits on his decreased defense so let's come out of there 
Let's take him for a run. I think we take him for a run in Clan Boss. Doesn't help that my cold heart's not geared as well. Um, I think we take him for a run in Clan Boss and see how he prioritizes steals there. Okay, then. Here we go. We've got a team together. What I'm really keen to see is whether he can keep decreased attack on for all of the important phases of the fight. So we're on a Nightmare Clan Boss. We do have Grush in here for healing because I haven't um, put everyone in life still gear. Grush is in for healing. He will be our backup decrease attack champion. But I want to see if we can keep decrease attack on for the entire fight. So I'm going to sort of slow it down, make sure that we can see what's going on. So he's actually put decrease attack on as his first skill, which is a little bit annoying actually. But let's see what um, Duck does as his first priority on Clan Boss. Mm. Okay, so what he's actually done is the skill I was really afraid of him doing, which is the deep, uh, which is the make himself unkillable. I'm going to take Drush out and see if he does the same thing. Actually, rather than taking Drush out, I'm going to leave Drush in. I'm just going to make sure Drush doesn't do that ability right at the start. We don't start an auto. Good game. Well done. Uh, we're just going to A1 with Drush to start, and then we're going to hit auto. Let's slow it down again. What's he going to do? Does he lead A2 or A3? He leads A3. Now, why is that so important? Basically, his A3 skill is on a four turn cooldown if you book it if you don't land any books in a3 at all it will be on a six turn cooldown and that means you can actually use him as providing you land books in your a2 and not your a3 you'll be able to use him as your decrease attack and decrease defense champion but if he does his reflect damage and unkillable thing as a as his kind of like first go to on clan boss then he's actually gonna run out of sync all the time so you could set it up so that he does his decreased defense first he'll consistently run out of sync unless you manage to um yeah so you can just see he's not doing it now unless you manage to not book the a3 so that's a real shame and actually it's it's a poor for me, it's a poor bit of coding because I can't see a situation where you prefer the unkillable and reflect damage over that decreased defense and attack for clan boss. I can't, I just can't see in my head a, a, like a single time where that's what you want. So that's a shame um, because everything else about his kit is going to work for you. You're going to get decreased accuracy on. It's not the best debuff for clan boss, but it's also not the worst. You know, it does mean that you don't take some of the poisons, some of the things like decreased speeds when they come, um, but you can't ever stop the stun from being from being landed from decreased accuracy. So that's not going to help with that. But yeah, it's it's a real shame actually because he would be a top draw clan boss champion as well as all those other things that we've seen if he was doing his decreased defense and attack first. I will. Feed it back to Plarium. I will feed it back. Doesn't mean anything's going to happen. Despite what some people may think, I do not have like a straight line to the developer that changes all this stuff. I just try my best. Um, but there you go. We'll, I'll let this run through. We'll see what sort of damage we do as a team. I think the reason that we fail this run is probably because decreased attack eventually falls off at some point. Um, although we do have Grush and him doing it, so it might just about be consistent enough. But yeah, we'll let it run through and we'll see where we get to. So here we go, guys. We're turn 20 and decrease attack has fallen off and therefore the run comes to an end. That's how essential decrease attack is to our debuffs. And because he doesn't do it as his kind of first default skill, we've lost a, one of our team already and basically the run becomes a wipe. So that's why you need someone who's going to consistently prioritize that decrease attack ability and land it each time. Uh, and unfortunately, Duck at the moment or however you say his name, is not going to be consistent enough for that. Um, what we will do, though, we'll see what sort of damage he's done. Um, and then I guess we're just going to try him in... Well, we could try him in the arena. I know what he's going to do in the arena. He's going to place decreased defense so that your nuker could come in and do some damage. So, you know, for that, he can do his job. He'll do his job well. He's similar to if you put a War Maiden in and did the same same piece of work. 
He's done 2 million. Drush has done 2 million. We know that Drush is a hard hitter and a good champion. So for me, good champion. Like His overall kit is really strong. I just feel like they've slightly gone awry with how he prioritizes skills in clan boss, unfortunately. Um, so as I said earlier, Faction Wars, he's going to jump into anybody's team um, if they need a decreased defense champion, and you do. So he's going to be in just about anyone's team. And for the arena... Basically, he's going to be coming in for this type of team that needs a decreased defense champ. So we'll come in in this, in this kind of second or third spot. You might have second spot, a decreased speed type of champion or a control champion like Silar. You might then have Duke come in and then you might have your damage dealer coming in over the top. Like this. So we would slow down the enemy. He would then come in and hit. Uh, I've got Purgator too fast. It's a bit annoying. He would then come in and get his decreased defense and attack. Let's just, I guess, again, just make sure he does this as his default. It's really important. He does. And then, obviously, once you've then got that decrease. Um, defense on your damage dealer is going to come in and slam over the top and take out the enemy so that's cool i guess then because he's defensive as well he's then got like a second bite of the cherry if you're in this sort of situation you didn't quite kill everyone and you know you need a champion that's going to come in and just help out your damage dealers again second time round he tries to throw out the provokes they've got block debuffs so they didn't do it and he then does a bit of reflect damage as well so he's actually He's top draw arena. He is top draw arena. He's as good as any other decreased defense champion out there. Okay, so I'm throwing in someone who's really slow here just so that we get the idea of what he can be doing um, on a kind of normal arena run. So we speed up. We drop their speed. We get a decreased defense out as a, a kind of basic. We cycle back round. The nuke comes in and we slam everyone down. So you can kind of see how that rotation works. If we didn't kill everyone there, let's say they had an unkillable person. Maybe we find someone with a skull crown uh, like this. Actually, they've got a torment, which is probably just going to mess us up. Skull crown anywhere. Someone who's not likely to die is what I want. Maybe Sir Nick's not going to die. We'll see. Speed it up. Same idea. No, everyone's dying. Okay, but if, if someone didn't die there, then what we're going to do is bring in the um, provoke on whoever's left. And whoever's left then gets provoked, and it gives our damage dealer another cycle round. So actually, top draw. Top draw, plus he can take a hit because he's a defensive champ. So yeah, look, guys, all in all, brilliant addition to the game. It's a shame that his AI on clan boss is a bit wonky. Um... You know, if you were running him in Doom Tower, I think he would cope absolutely fine in the higher levels as a decreased defense champion for you and a provoked champion. So, you know, you've got two things going on here. He's decreasing the defense of the enemy for us so that we can do higher hits like this. And he's also um, able to provoke as well so that we're just kind of pulling some of that damage away from our damage dealers so yeah look guys all in all great champion um really good addition as a as an epic um sits up there for me at that same sort of quality level as a stag knight perhaps even a tier above albeit i don't love his a3 his a3 kind of lets him down a bit but yeah defensive champion awesome champion hope you enjoyed the video i'll catch you later